Hi, I'm Adam Felmley with Airte Structures, and today what we're gonna be doing is showing you the typical installation of an Airte Structures FRP truss bridge. Shown here are most of the tools you'll need for the assembly of your FRP truss. For a complete list of tools, please refer to the typical installation instructions for Airte Structures FRP truss bridge document. And as always, the builder should always observe common safety precautions when assembling the bridge. The first step in the assembly of your FRP truss bridge is to ensure that your abutments and anchor locations match the dimensions according to your specific set of plans for your bridge. Temporary structure will need to be in place throughout the bridge because the bridge will need to have some kind of structure to be supported during that assembly process. As you can see here, we have timber cribbing set up. Uh, it might be different in your situation. You might have to have scaffolding depending upon the height of uh, the, the waterway or the, uh, the ground below. What this does, it provides support to the bottom cords while other truss members are assembled. This temporary structure should be level and just below the bridge abutments. Note that we are verifying our straight line from the top of the FRP bearing pads. Because each bridge is built with a positive camber, shims or spacers are gonna be required to add this camber. However, at this beginning stage, we want the supports to be in much of the same plane as possible. This camber is gonna be added later during the process. Throughout this assembly process, two bolt tightening terms will be used, finger tighten and hand tighten. When we refer to finger tighten, we mean to tighten the bolt no more than can be done with your fingers. The nut should only make contact with the lock washer and not compress it. When we refer to hand tighten, we mean to tighten the bolt with a wrench until the lock washer has become fully compressed. This is typically about 50 foot pounds, but you do not want to over tighten. Over tightening could cause cracking to tube members. Bottom cords should be laid out according to the item numbers marked on each piece in your specific field assembly plans. These cords can be verified that they are being placed in the proper location with their corresponding mirror piece by placing them on top of each other and making sure that the holes are aligned. Something to note here is that exterior cords have holes drilled in the bottom flange so that the bottom laterals can be connected. This is the side that will face down. After bottom cords have been laid out, we're gonna to begin to attach our splices, end posts, abutment clips, and abutment clip spacers. Cord splice connections will consist of two splice tubes located between the cords, two splice plates on the outside of each cord. At these connections, you'll be using the longer five inch bolts. Typically, we attach all hardware and FRP pieces to finger tight only. Then we use shims to ensure that the cords are in line and flush to each other. Once this has been achieved, all splices must be hand tightened so that they are not free to move during the rest of the assembly process. This is the only connection that will be hand tight until we start to add our top cord. Note that most cords are reinforced at the web near the ends of the bridges. For this reason, a six inch bolt will need to be used to attach the abutment clips. This is also a good time to note that some abutment clips will have slots to allow for bridge expansion and contraction. Anytime you are bolting through a cord, you must have a member between them. Most of the time, this is a vertical post or an end post. At this front abutment clip, we have short spacers that go in here like that. Right now we're gonna start putting in the vertical members. Another option at this point would be to assemble the verticals and the floor beams separately and lift them up into place here. Most vertical posts will extend below the bottom cord, six to eight inches depending upon your floor beam, with the half inch holes on the upward side. This is a good time to note that some vertical posts, X braces, and other structural tubes are plugged. This is to add strength to the connection design. These members will have a weep hole to allow any moisture that may collect in the member to escape. These weep holes should be facing down if two weep holes are not present in the member. Plug members are usually placed closer to the ends of the bridge. Also note that most cords are reinforced at the web near bridge ends, so five inch bolts will need to be used at these locations. All other are four inch. After all verticals have been placed, we can begin to add the floor beams. Most floor beams are attached below the bottom cord, but refer to your plans for proper placement. When floor beams have been attached, add center stringer posts and the center stringer. 
The center stringer splice is similar to the cord splices. However, there will be only one splice plate and two and a half inch hardware will be used. After attaching floor beams, you can now attach the side braces from the floor beams to the vertical members. Note that the connection of the side brace to the vertical post, we will be using half inch angled plates and half inch hardware. Attach bottom lateral members and X members to the bottom of the bottom cords. This is the step that will ensure that your bridge is straight. There are pre-drilled holes in the fascia beams or the outside of the bottom members for initial alignment and placement of the bottom laterals, and they will be match drilled at all other hole locations. Before match drilling, ensure that the bridge is square. Match drill bottom flange of bottom cords at the pre-drilled lateral brace hole locations. Attach half inch hardware to the bottom lateral members. Bottom lateral hardware may be hand tight at this point. You may have to move your temporary support structure from being supported at the cords to supported at the floor beams to allow attachment of all the bottom laterals. In this assembly, as with most bridges, we found that we only needed to support the bridge at mid span since the cord splices have already been secured. After bottom lateral members have been installed, we can add the vertical X bracing or depending upon your bridge, single diagonal members. If your bridge has X bracing as this one does, you'll need to note the orientation of the X bracing. Because our bridges have a positive mechanical camber, the X bracing is slightly wider at the top than it is at the bottom. This will be labeled on each piece. Two other items of consideration will be that first, the location of the plugged bracing versus the unplugged bracing as discussed when we installed the vertical post. Second is the tension and compression orientation of the member. Refer to your specific plans for this. Up until this point, we've been building the bridge as if the bottom cord was flat. At this point, we're gonna add a small camber to the bridge. Adding this camber is necessary to attach the top cord. Otherwise, the holes will not match up. We started by running a straight line from the near end of the bridge to the far end of the bridge and slowly lifted the bridge at mid span until an inch and three quarter inch camber was achieved. Once camber has been added, we can start to add the top cord. Top cords are laid out similar to the bottom cords according to their item numbers and the plans sent with your bridge. Ensure that the bolt heads are facing to the inside of the bridge. We found that installing the interior top cord first makes it easier to attach the outside cord. Using an alignment tool will make it easier to attach your hardware. Attach all splice connections similar to how you did the bottom cord splices. We laid out top caps and spaced as needed to ensure a flush fit at the ends of the bridge and clamp the top cap to the bridge. Then we match drilled the top of the cap. After you've pre-drilled your top cap, you can go ahead and add the connection hardware. Since decking can vary from bridge to bridge, whether it be timber decking or FRP decking or aluminum decking, that installation process isn't covered in this video, but you can find that in the Arite Installation Guide for FRP Bridges. I hope you found this video helpful for the installation of your FRP bridges. Uh, check us out at aritestructures.com. Have a good day.